Chapter 7, Section 2 In Chapter 3.3 .3 of Calculus 1, we learned how the chain rule could be used to find the derivative. Here, we will find the antiderivative of a function by reversing the properties of the chain rule. Learning how to use substitution will be an important part in finding an antiderivative for this section. We will be working with the products of the inside-outside rule, e, and the natural log functions. To use substitution effectively, we will let w act as the inside function and hold the following to be true. The derivative of w, w prime of x dx, is equivalent to dw dx times dx. Let's clarify what this means with a few derivatives and antiderivative chain rule examples. So let's start with how we used to calculate the derivatives using the chain rule so we can see how we would apply this to antiderivatives. So let's try to find the derivative of 1 fifth x squared plus 3 all raised to the fifth power. Now remember, when you have something in parentheses raised to a power and you want to make a substitution, we let our substitution equal whatever is in the parentheses. So here, we let w equal x squared plus 3. So now, we can rewrite our original function as 1 fifth w to the fifth power. Now when we differentiate, again the 5 comes down and we subtract 1 from the power. So when the 5 comes down, it multiplies the 1 fifth, canceling the constant in front, and we subtract 1 from the power to get 4. Then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, w prime. Now, when we resubstitute and we plug back in for w, that was our x squared plus 3 to the fourth power. W prime is the derivative of W, the derivative of the inside. So we take the derivative of each term. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 3 is 0. So our final derivative looks like this. Now, we're going to do something very similar in reverse order to find the antiderivative. We're actually going to work with the same function to see how this all plays together. If we want to find the antiderivative, of x squared plus 3 to the fourth power times 2x, which was our original derivative, we should get back the original function we had started with. So how do we do this? Okay, so like before, we want to substitute. The goal is going to be to identify the inside function that has a derivative as a factor and set it equal to w. So we're looking for a function and its derivative, so that when we find the antiderivative, we have all the right pieces. So here, we're going to let w be our x squared plus 3. Generally, you'll substitute w equal to whatever is raised to the power. So then our dw, or our derivative, is going to be 2x dx, because again, the 3 disappears because it's a constant. So now we have our w and our dw, and let's see how we set this up. So we want to find the antiderivative, so we write this as the integral of x squared plus 3 to the fourth times 2x dx. And now with our substitution, we put a w in for x squared plus 3. That was our original substitution. And then instead of 2x dx, which was our derivative, we know that's equivalent to dw. So the 2x dx is gone and dw is in. So now we have the integral of w to the fourth dw. This is very convenient because we know how to integrate this. This is of the same form as x to the n. So when we integrate, we're going to be adding 1 to the power and dividing by the new power. So here, when we add 1 to the power, it becomes w to the fifth, divide by the new power, over 5. Now we want to substitute back in for w. So we get 1 fifth, and now our w originally substitutes for x squared plus 3 to the fifth power. And then, we always have to remember when we find an antiderivative to add plus c. So now we have the antiderivative of x squared plus 3 to the fourth times 2x. Let's look at another example. Suppose we have x squared times x cubed minus 8 to the fifth dx. As we saw before, when we make our substitution, it's generally going to be for whatever is in the parentheses that's raised to a power. So here, our w is going to be the inside function, which is x cubed minus 8. So then we want to find its derivative. So the derivative of x cubed minus 8 is going to be 3x squared. Again, the 8 cancels because it's a constant, and when we take the derivative, that's just 0. 
Notice that we can rewrite the original integral with the x cubed minus 8 to the fifth term first, and then x squared dx. That's going to help us see how we need to make our substitution. Now, notice that the derivative we have is 3x squared dx, but what's inside our antiderivative function here is only an x squared dx, so they're different by a factor of 3. If these differ by a constant, we can multiply or divide to get what we need. Dividing both sides of our yellow equation up here by 3 gives us 1 3rd dw equals x squared dx. Now that we have our x squared dx, we can make our substitution. So we want to substitute, find the antiderivative, and then resubstitute. Those are our steps now that we've defined our substitution. So we start with x squared times x cubed minus 8 to the fifth dx. That's our original function. When we plug in w, that'll go in for x cubed minus 8, so that gives us w to the fifth. And now, instead of an x squared dx, we know we can substitute in 1 3rd dw. So that goes in here. The 1 3rd is a constant, so we can actually pull that out front and worry about that a little bit later. So we have 1 3rd times the integral of w to the fifth dw. So again, we're going to add 1 to the power to become w to the sixth and divide by the new power. So the 1 3rd carries. We have 1 3rd times w to the sixth over 6. And again, we have that plus c whenever we find an antiderivative. Here we can combine some constants. The 3 and the 6 are both in the denominator. We multiply to get 1 18th w to the 6th plus c. And then our last step is to resubstitute back in what w is. So again, w was x cubed minus 8 to the 6th. So our final answer after all our work for our antiderivative is 1 18th x cubed minus 8 to the 6th plus c. Now, there's a similar situation that happens when we're working with e. Using the chain rule, we use to find derivatives of e by looking at the original function and the derivative of the power of e. So we know from the chain rule that if you start with e to the x squared, the derivative is 2x e to the x squared. Because again, when you take the derivative, you get the same thing back with a multiplier in front, which is the derivative of the power. Now, from what we know about antiderivatives, that means if we take the antiderivative of 2x e to the x squared, we should get back the original function of e to the x squared, of course, plus a constant. So how do we find the antiderivative? How do we do this with substitution? Okay, so to find the antiderivative, again, we need to find the inside function whose derivative appears as a factor and substitute it with w. So when you have terms with e in them, your substitution will be that w will equal whatever that power of e is, which here is x squared. So we let w equal x squared. Then the derivative of w will be 2x dx. So now here, we know that dw is 2x dx, which is very fortunate since it's part of our original integral. So again, we want to substitute find the antiderivative, and resubstitute to solve. So, we start with e to the x squared times 2x dx, that's our original function. We substitute in a w for x squared, and then instead of 2x dx, we have a dw. So with our substitution, we have the integral of e to the w dw. Well, that's handy. We know that the antiderivative of e to the w is e to the w. So now, we know that when we integrate e to the w dw, we get e to the w plus c. And the last step is to resubstitute in for w. So that gives us e to the x squared plus c. That's exactly what we were expecting here. Let's look at another example of this, using the same approach. So we want to find the antiderivative of 5x e to the 5x squared. Again, when you do this type of substitution, you want to let w equal whatever is in the power. So here, w will equal 5x squared. Now, of course, we also need to find the corresponding derivative. So dw is 10x dx. Well, notice that what we have left in the integral is a 5x dx. So how do we get from 10x to 5x? Well, again, if it's only differing by a constant, we can multiply and divide both sides to get the constant we need. So here, 
to go from 10x dx to 5x dx, we need to multiply both sides by 1 half. So 1 half dw equals 5x dx. Great, now we have the 5x dx that we need. So we're going to substitute, find the antiderivative, and then resubstitute. So again, our original antiderivative we're looking for is 5x e to the 5x squared dx. Now again, we can rewrite this with the 5x on the right-hand side. It's multiplication, so it doesn't matter which one comes first, just so it's easier to see the substitution. When we substitute in a w, that goes in for the power for this 5x squared dx. And instead of 5x dx, we have 1 half dw. Now again, the 1 half is a constant, so it can come out front. So we have 1 half integral of e to the w dw. We know that the antiderivative of e to the w is just e to the w. So we have 1 half e to the w plus a constant. Now our last step is to resubstitute. So that gives us 1 half e to the 5x squared plus c. Hopefully by now, you've been able to recognize a trend in how we're finding these antiderivatives for chain rule products. We're going to look at natural logs now, and we'll see that they follow a similar pattern. Okay, so let's start by taking the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 1. When we substitute w equals x squared plus 1, then we have an original function of natural log of w, and when we differentiate, we get 1 over w times w prime. So it's 1 over w times the derivative of the inside, which here is 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x, or 2x over x squared plus 1. And again, if you remember the shortcut with natural logs, when we take the derivative, whatever is in the argument goes on the bottom of a fraction, and whatever the derivative of the bottom is goes on top. So that's how we differentiated. And that also means that if we now want to find the antiderivative of 2x over x squared plus 1, we should get the original function back. So we're going to work in the other direction to find the antiderivative. So we know the following. 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x dx should have an antiderivative of natural log of x squared plus 1. So if we want to find the antiderivative of this function using substitution, we'll start again by finding the inside function. So here, we're going to be substituting w for what's in the bottom of the denominator. So here, w equals x squared plus 1. So then the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x dx, which fortunately is something we also have in our integral. So now, we want to substitute, find an antiderivative, and resubstitute. So we started with the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x dx. Now, our substitution says that w equals x squared plus 1, so that's what's in the bottom of this fraction, times, now instead of 2x dx, we're going to be able to put in our dw. So we have the integral of 1 over w dw. If you remember back to our basic antiderivatives, the antiderivative of 1 over w is natural log of w. So we get the natural log of w plus c. So now, the last step is to resubstitute in for w, which gives us the natural log of x squared plus 1 plus a constant. That's exactly what we expected. Let's do another example. Find the antiderivative of x cubed over x to the fourth minus 2. So again, what we want to start with here is a w substitution, where w is going to equal the denominator of our fraction. So the inside function is going to be our x to the fourth minus 2. Then our dw is 4x cubed dx. Again, we want to look at what we have. Here we have an x cubed dx, and here our derivative was 4x cubed dx. So to get just an x cubed dx, we're going to need to divide both sides by 4. So 1 fourth dw equals x cubed dx. x cubed dx is what we have, so now we can substitute find our antiderivative, and resubstitute. So we start with our original antiderivative that we're looking for. Again, we can write this as 1 over x to the fourth minus 2 times x cubed dx. You don't have to do this, but it's just a way to see the substitution better. Now, instead of x to the fourth minus 2, we substitute in our w, 
and instead of an x cubed dx, we substitute in a 1 fourth dw. Again, the 1 fourth can come out because it's a constant. So we have 1 fourth times the integral of 1 over w dw. We know the antiderivative of 1 over w is natural log of w. So we get 1 fourth natural log of w plus c. Now again, we just need to resubstitute. So we get 1 fourth times the natural log of x to the fourth minus 2 plus c.